So now a little bit about the negative patterns in uh, software engineering. Uh, this book came out also uh, something like 20 years ago, uh, quite uh, soon after the Design Patterns book. And one of the ideas there was that if you're using design patterns, it is already an anti-pattern because there is not enough abstraction in your system and you need to use like special tricks on top of your language and, and other things in order to, uh, to say what you want to say. And I'm presenting a couple of uh, anti-patterns, some from the book, some not from the book, but the concept of anti-pattern since then has become also quite uh, uh, popular. So methodological anti-patterns, copy-paste programming, for example, we've, we've uh, discussed it uh, uh, last uh, week as well, is when you, uh, instead of developing a new solution, you copy-paste code from uh, somewhere else within your code base or just, you know, from Google or whatever. Uh, premature optimization, a famous quote of Donald Knuth says that premature optimization is the root of all evil. And, I mean, that's the guy who spent most of his life really uh, optimizing different algorithms. So probably he, uh, even, even he says uh, something negative about optimization, we should listen. Uh, dependency hell is when you uh, have many... Uh, I, it could, can occur on many levels, so many classes or many packages or many um, I know systems in a uh, in a entire product that depend on one another in such a way that if uh, if one of the dependencies is mm, missing for example then it's uh, very hard to detect uh, which systems should be updated in order to uh, to get it right Rule of Credibility was uh, uh, published as a separate paper, I think, where uh, somebody said that, uh, you know, the first 90% of code takes 90% of time and the remaining 10% takes the other 90% of time, which uh, basically means that your total time will be 180% uh, of what you have expected. And this is a, a, a problem of planning, actually, when you... Uh, when you underestimate the uh, amount of time and um, the, the effort in general that it takes to finish the system, uh, finish the product when it is not quite done yet, but very close to, uh, to being done. Uh, analysis paralysis, that's the, the other way around when you're kind of, you're uh, afraid of making this uh, mistake of rule of credibility and you're afraid to, uh, to take a decision to optimize or not optimize something and then you're stuck in the planning phase. You're collecting requirements, you're analyzing them, you're discussing all the things and, uh, well, nothing gets produced basically. Vendor locking is when you uh, really go for uh, one particular uh, technology and yeah, the simplest example is you go for .NET uh, solution and then you are in the Microsoft world and if uh, tomorrow Microsoft uh, tells you something, that, I don't know, that they discontinue a particular language or they make a particular change in the language, then you basically have to comply because, well, uh, you're, you're already there and your system only works in uh, .NET. And smoke and mirrors, that's, uh, uh, that's a way to present your architecture in such a way that uh, things that are not yet implemented, they seem like they are implemented. They can be done by uh, uh, you know, lack of testing or uh, some other obscure, uh, obscure uh, methods. Uh, then there are some technological design pattern, uh, anti patterns, uh, something like cargo cult programming. So cargo cult is uh, uh, when you when you do something uh, as, as when you treat something as a natural phenomenon or some some divine intervention without thinking why it happens. So it, this goes hand in hand quite often with uh, uh, copy paste programming. When and uh, this is okay at the very, very, very first stages of learning a new language. When you just, uh, you know, you, you, you look at uh, other people's code and you say, okay, in the beginning they define, I don't know, a main function. So I should do main function as well because everybody does it. But uh, the assumption is that within the first couple of months you will get uh, uh, to know the language better and then you will know what... Uh, are the real reasons for that. 
Big ball of mud is an anti pattern when you uh, uh, when you put all the things in in one place, in one class, or in one package, or in one uh, method even. Uh, circular dependency, of course, when you uh, when you well, you always have dependencies, but I mean, if uh, uh, if several things depend on uh, each other, then it means that whenever you want to really change one of them, evolve, then you will need to evolve all of them. And while you're doing evolution, you should uh, already uh, uh, make the entire system consistent again. And that's much harder to do than to update one and then to propagate the updates uh, by uh, going by dependencies. Uh, sequential coupling is when uh, when you kind of uh, uh, have this, uh, with input-output you, you have this quite a lot, when you uh, kind of, you first need to open the file and only then you can work with the file and then you should close it. Uh, so just by looking at a piece of code, you don't know if certain things have happened before or not, but uh, the, uh, whether they happened or not, they, that has direct consequence on whether the code will work or not. Uh, the yo-yo um, the design or spaghetti code is when, you, when your design is, uh, or when, when your solution is uh, distributed uh, among different places and you need to look hands and forth uh, in order to understand what's going on. Hard-coded assumptions when you uh, have some um, uh, when you have some circumstances that you kind of uh, think that will always be true or that, that are true even for your particular thing uh, and then you hard-code them. You, you, you put the, uh, the constants and, and other things in your code and then later uh, when the circumstances change, when your assumptions are no longer valid, um, then people will really need to go through all your code in order to see this this constants, this, this uh, 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 exceptions and whatnot to, to change them. Uh, then there was this book about bug patterns in, in Java and uh, quite a lot of uh, things ca uh, came out of there as uh, you know really patterns that lead to uh, to bugs so whenever you're using uh, null pointers that's uh, uh, that is uh, an indication that uh, something somewhere will eventually go wrong or i don't know when you when you have a thread and it's it gets orphaned then then also it's uh, 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 it is it is a bug pattern because usually it leads to um, to memory leaks and so forth and and uh, several well most most of these patterns in this particular book they are uh, related to Java and Java only but if you look at lists that uh, tools like FindBugs or CheckStyle uh, detect uh, they are uh, they they have quite longer list of much more concrete things that. Uh, also correspond to uh, you know anti patterns, bug patterns, and whatever negative patterns you have, uh, and they report it to you. And there are quite a lot of linters, you know, uh, hlint, pylint, CSS lint, whatever uh, uh, programs that really look at the code and and report uh, some suspicious activity uh, to you there. But this suspicious activity is, is usually called code smell. So code smell is uh, so a smell is much weaker form of uh, a problem than a fault or an error because you're not saying something is wrong you just say that this smells funny and you should have a look at it and you should uh, as a programmer be worried that that not a lot of your code smells uh, smells badly. Examples of code smells is. Uh, the first and foremost is duplicated code. If you have two pieces of code in your system that look kind of similar but are uh, still present in several places, that is a smell. Maybe it's good, uh, maybe that's, that's the only reason for you to, to optimize uh, certain things, but uh, quite often it is a, a smell of trouble. Uh, feature envy, when, when uh, one uh, class keeps calling another class uh, uh, methods and uh, basically that means that the, the, the features that are in one class are needed in another class and well maybe you misplaced it, maybe you uh, you made a mistake in the design so the, these features should be in a separate class, I don't know, but uh, it is a smell of trouble. 
uh, inappropriate uh, intimacy it's uh, the same thing but uh, with uh, uh, with fields when you uh, when you are in a different class but you need access to uh, uh, private fields or fields that should have been private in in another class indecent exposure also the uh, uh, when you have like a class that uh, depends on um, on some internal implementation details of another class which means if you're a developer of one of these classes and you want to change something then you can't or you shouldn't because it will break stuff in in another class uh, conditional complexity if just you know I I on the level of uh, method even if you have too many if statements within mo one method then it's not exactly an error but it is smelly it is suspicious because um, well you in especially in object oriented programming you have these things like uh, 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 you know subclassing and polymorphism and all these kind of things that should uh, decrease the number of uh, uh, the number of plain ifs in your uh, in your code and if you have too many ifs in in one place or switch cases or whatnot then that is a sign of um, design probably not being done right large class again if, if you have like a god class that does just about everything that's uh, uh, that's a weird way to design your system Inconsistent naming, uh, starting with uh, uh, you know uh, whether you call something uh, uh, in in small letters or in uh, cap capital letters or in camel case, and going all the way to you know do we use verbs or do we use nouns for for uh, naming our uh, things, and solutions problem that's uh, basically the same as as uh, yo yo. Uh, but uh, it could happen, you know, on a uh, on a higher level as well. When you uh, when you say, okay, in order to understand, uh, uh, I don't know, security of of the system, you need to look uh, here, but also in this only in this fragment, and there in that fragment, and there, and basically you need to look into all classes in very specific places. And if you don't have the original developers with you then uh, it, it becomes almost impossible to, uh, to, see, to find all these uh, bits. And there are quite a lot of uh, uh, other code smells. Uh, this is a good URL where, where uh, uh, they give an overview of uh, multiple code smells. But I mean, Wikipedia also helps quite a lot. So the conclusion is that not all patterns are positive. Uh, and there are quite some of them that uh, has been known to cause trouble. So uh, if you want to be an experienced software engineer, learn to recognize them and learn to, to avoid them. And also not all anti-patterns are negative, it's just some people don't like particular uh, style of doing things. And that's why you have, uh, you know, concept of, uh, weaker concepts of smells when you, uh, um, when you might have uh, something wrong with the code, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, if you want to know more about this topic, there is a very big but very good book called Code Complete, uh, written by Steve McConnell, uh, I think. And there is a kind of more shorter and more uh, um, uh, more reading for fun, which is called How to Write Unmaintainable Code, which basically gives you bad advice that you should not follow. <laughs>